This is a stimulus check update and daily news report, and there's so much going on in Washington right now. So Joe Manchin is definitely in the hot seat. Not only is he getting heat from AOC for calling her a young lady, but the drama between Joe Manchin and Bernie Sanders is definitely turning up right now. So I'm going to play you two new video clips, one from Joe Manchin, one from Bernie Sanders. They were actually on the same show on ABC. We'll also talk about the $1,400 stimulus check, how Congress plans to pay for all of these bills, also, Congress has multiple bills to pass before the September 30th deadline. We'll talk about the COVID sniffing dogs that are 99% accurate. Then I'll answer the questions you leave for me in the comments. Hope you're having a terrific Tuesday. If you appreciate these fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below. So COVID sniffing dogs, what's going on there? COVID sniffing dogs at Miami airport are over 99% accurate, says doctor. So the way they smell COVID, uh, so these two dogs can detect COVID-19 through an infected person's breath and sweat uh, are being deployed at Miami International Airport. So far, it's just at Miami International Airport, but you could probably see these in other airports, maybe even outside restaurants, outside buildings. Uh, people could have their own COVID dogs to see if they catch COVID. I don't know. I don't know where, where it all could end, but let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, next, let's talk about how U.S. COVID cases finally start to dip from latest peak, but Delta variant still on the rise in some states. So if we look at the cases, what's going on here, we're kind of slowing down a little bit. Uh, yesterday's cases on the 13th was 261,000 cases, but you can see it's not like a stand-up ladder as it was before over the past few weeks. It's starting to slow down a little bit, but that's what we thought over here in at the end of November. We thought it was going to slow down, then it went up and up and up. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Do you think it's going to go down? Is it going to go back up? Uh, let me know your thoughts on where you think it's going to happen. Also, I've been getting a lot of comments about this. I wanted to address it. Congress exempt from Biden's COVID-19 vaccine mandate. So what's going on here is President Biden's executive order mandating COVID-19 vaccines among all federal workers does not apply to members of Congress, the federal court system, or their staffers. Not sure if this was done on purpose, but uh, members of Congress and the federal court system uh, don't, don't fall under that vaccine mandate. Just the executive branch and a lot of federal workers and contractors. Uh, yeah, so a lot of people are saying uh, that Congress kind of planned that because they didn't want to be mandated. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what to think about it. This article doesn't give a reason why. It just confirms that that is true. Uh, next, let's talk about what's going on with Washington. First, let's get over this drama right here. Ocasio-Cortez fires back at Manchin after he refers to her as young lady. So yesterday's video, I, st I talked about the beginning drama of between uh, Joe Manchin and AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And uh, so basically it's heating up. So his response uh, didn't, uh, didn't go well with AOC. So what she says, AOC, is, in Washington, I usually know my questions of power are getting somewhere when the powerful stop, to re stop referring to me as congresswoman and start referring to me as young lady instead. Imagine if every time someone referred to someone as young lady, they were asked responded by being addressed with their age and gender. They'd be pretty upset if one responded with the old man, right? Why this kind of weird patronizing behavior is so accepted is beyond me. Uh, so let me know your thoughts on this. Is she, uh, some people are saying in this article that she's overreacting by being called young lady. Is she looking too much into it? Is she rightfully upset for being called young lady and not congresswoman? Uh, to give you uh, the source of where this actually happened. So I'll give you a little bit of the backstory. So what she said is, Manchin has weekly huddles with Exxon and is one of many senators who gives lobbyists their pen to write so-called bipartisan fossil fuel bills. It's killing people. It's killing people, our people, at least 12 last night, sick of this bipartisan corruption that masquerades as clear-eyed moderation. So his response to that was, I don't know that young lady that well. I really don't. I have met her one time, I think, between sets here. But that's it. So we have not had any conversations. She just she just speculating and saying things because she wants to. Uh, so that's the young lady comment right there. Let me know your thoughts on that. Is this something to cause drama over? Is this, uh, or is this kind of being blowed out of proportion? Let me know your thoughts on that. Next, let's talk about fourth stimulus check. So 
for stimulus payment of $1,400, not off the table entirely thanks to inflation. So uh, the $1,400 check for stimulus check is just going for senior citizens. So the Senior Citizens League petition for a $1,400 check uh, is in act is is available right now. But to be honest, uh, this is not getting as much publicity and not getting as big of a push as it did initially. There was an explosion of articles, a lot of things going on. It seems to be trickling off. So I'm not sure about the steam for the fourth stimulus check of $1,400 going out for. Uh, seniors collecting social security could still be added uh, they're still collecting signatures when it, when we're talking about signatures and a forced stimulus check the two thousand dollar per month to every american uh, petition is at two million eight hundred eighty thousand that kind of is stagnating as well uh, next let's talk about what's going on with congress what they have to do so here are the major issues and deadlines facing Congress as lawmakers return to Washington. So uh, there's a few things that they have to get done, including all these big infrastructure spending bills, st stimulus bills. Uh, so let me go over this really quick, then I'll get into the videos of Joe Manchin and Bernie Sanders. So with infrastructure, the part one infrastructure, they're saying September 27th is when they're going to get that done. And then the Democrats reconciliation bill, they said that they're going to get that done at the same time possibly September 27th, government funding. So uh, lawmakers need to pass appropriations bill by September 30th to prevent a government shutdown. That's only two weeks away, and the 27th, just about two weeks away. So there's going to be a lot of action over the next two weeks. Then the d debt ceiling, uh, things need to be done before October. Uh, if so, then Congress fails and then uh, the U.S. defaults on loans. Still not sure what that means, though. So a lot of stuff that Congress has to do. And uh, why are they doing it now? Well, the House is still on vacation. As you can see, in September, the red is the Senate, the blue is the House, and purple is when they're all together. So it looks like on the 20th, they're getting back. If we scroll down here to October, you can see they're not going to be back here for long. The House is going to be in session for two weeks the Senate for another week after that, and then more vacations and more vacations. Uh, so hopefully they get stuff done. Next, let's talk about what's going on with Joe Manchin. Uh, so Senator Joe Manchin says there's no way to pass $3.5 trillion budget bill by September 27th, saying that timeline is way too short. Uh, but there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Supposedly by tomorrow, they should finish the text for it. Not sure. Uh, but anyways, here is Joe Manchin talking more about this package. Let's talk about its impact on the president's agenda. We're joined by West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. Senator Manchin, thanks for joining us this morning. You know, you've, called for, us, George. you've called for a strategic pause on the president's build back. A uh, better plan, the $3.5 trillion plan. But party leaders from the president to Speaker Pelosi to Leader Schumer have all rejected that call for a pause. Schumer says it's full speed ahead in the Senate. It can't pass the Senate without your vote. So where do things stand right now? Well, George, I've been very clear, I think, and I think a strategic pause is necessary right now. We have the unknown, and the unknown is everything you've been talking about. COVID, what's going to happen with COVID, what it'll do to the economy. No one's talking about inflation or debt, and we should have that as part of the discussion. And then the geopolitical, what's going on around the world and what type of challenges we may face. So the unknown is there, and we don't know what that's going to, going to uh, partake. What we do know is that basically the need for this, the emergency to do something in the next week is not there. Uh, we've done 5.4 trillion, George, over the last year and about a year and a half. 5.4 trillion. A lot of that money is still going out the door. There's no one going to be left behind uh, for the rest of this year and most of next year. So the urgency, I can't understand why we can't but take time, deliberate on this, and work. Back in January, you proposed spending $4 trillion on infrastructure. So what changed? Well, you're talking about four, that was about 4.5 trillion they had uh, uh, talking about. Is that what you're talking about? What the Yeah, you were, you were saying back we've plan, spent about five, having, yeah. Ha ha having both of those put together. And I said from day one, these are two complete different categories. The one we have in front of us right now that's already passed in a bipartisan way with 19 Republicans, George, is the hardcore infrastructure, the roads, the bridges, internet, water, sewer, all the things that have been neglected for the last 30 years. The president went out and campaigned on this. He went out and sold this thing. We all got behind him. We had a bipartisan deal. And I think it's the greatest thing that we could do. That's the one that has the urgent and emergency that we have. Let's get that one done. It's setting over in the House right now.
But if the bill is fully paid for and doesn't add to the deficit, uh, the unknown that you, you're concerned about, one of them is inflation. That's not really a concern, is it, if the bill is fully paid for? Well, George, basically, if the bill is fully paid for, why did they put $1.7 trillion of borrowing power in the language? And next of all, it's only run out for 10 years, okay? So if some of the things we know will never go off, so don't you, be, you should be more accurate to what the real number is going to be. I'm just saying right now, George, we're at $28.750 billion, $28 trillion, and it goes up 4 to $5 billion every day. No one's even talking. Inflation. People are talking to me in West Virginia about the price of gas, the price of uh, everything they buy, including their groceries, how it's affecting them. So I think we need to see what we're doing right now and the effects we're having. No one is saying they're losing their benefits because they're going to extend up through next year. Why are we rushing for this one week? Why do we have to have everything done in one week? What are your thoughts on what Joe Manchin has to say? Do you agree, disagree? But Senator Sanders says there is a real dan danger uh, there is a real danger infrastructure reconciliation bills will fail over democratic infighting and there is a lot of infighting as i mentioned aoc and joe manchin joe manchin bernie sanders speaking of bernie sanders here is uh, bernie sanders right after joe manchin speaking i want to bring in senator bernie sanders now senator sanders thanks thanks for joining us as well uh you just heard senator manchin uh right there he said he just respectfully disagrees we shouldn't hold this bipartisan infrastructure package hostage uh, to the reconciliation bill? Well, I think maybe the converse is true, that maybe Senator Manchin is holding the reconciliation bill hostage. Uh, as you know, uh, George, from day one, the President of the United States, uh, the Speaker of the House, uh, Majority Leader Schumer, have made it clear we're going down a two-track approach. Both bills are going together. I happen to think that Joe Manchin is right. Physical infrastructure is terribly important. But I happen to think that the needs of the human beings of our country, working families, the children, the elderly, the poor, are even more important. And we can and must do both. Look, everybody in America, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or Independent, understands that for the last many years, the very richest people in this country and the largest corporations have done phenomenally well while the working class and the middle class of this country struggle. And we got close to 600 million people sleeping out on the streets. Elderly people in America can't afford to put dentures into their mouth. They have no teeth in their mouth in some cases. Can't afford hearing aids. Can't afford eyeglasses. Working families cannot afford child care for their kids. Young people cannot afford to go to college. And then on top of all of that, the scientific community is telling us that we're looking at a cataclysmic crisis in terms of climate. Oregon is burning. California is burning. People are drowning in New York City. Detroit, flooding. Siberia, largest fire on Earth. Drought all over the world. The United States must leave the world in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel. This is a crisis. So what polling tells us is working families all over this country understand that now is the time for Congress to address the long neglected problems facing working families. Now is the time to have the wealthy and large corporations. We got billionaires in this country. We don't pay a nickel in federal income taxes. So I think we can do all of this. We can do the physical infrastructure, we could do the reconciliation bill, create millions of good jobs, and finally tell the American people that we are going to stand up for working families, not just the rich and the powerful. I guess the question I have is how? There's no margin for error in the Senate. If you vote against it, it doesn't pass. If Senator Manchin votes against it, it doesn't pass. I mean, so you're likely, if you both stick to your positions, you're going to end up with nothing. That is a possibility, I and mean, I think that would be a disaster for the American people. But you got the President of the United States. You got leadership in the House and the Senate. You got the old, this is not Joan Manchin versus Bernie Sanders. I would surmise that over 90% of Democrats, over 40 Democrats in the Senate, would prefer to spend what I propose, $6 trillion, because they understand the needs facing working families <clears throat> and climate are so great. So a major compromise has already been made. And there is a real danger, a real danger that this bill will lose that the infrastructure bill will lose in the House because you've got many people there and I support them 
who are saying, you know what, we had a joint agreement. We're going to go forward together, deal physical infrastructure, deal with the needs of working families. Let's do it. Let's create the jobs. Let's deal with an expansion of Medicare. Let's deal with climate. That's what we've got to do. What are your thoughts on what Bernie Sanders has to say? Kind of, uh, you know, giving other counterpoints to Joe Manchin of why things need to get done now. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on all that. Next, I'm going to play a video clip of how all this is going to be paid for, which is one of the biggest concerns of Joe Manchin. How is it going to be paid for? Uh, here is a quick video clip explaining that. House Democrats are proposing a very long list of tax hikes to pay for President Biden's $3.5 trillion social spending plan, but they leave out some of the administration's key priorities. The House plan, for example, would raise the corporate rate to 26.5 percent instead of the 28 percent that the White House initially wanted. The capital gains rate would jump to 25 percent, though Biden had proposed matching it to the top tax rate for regular income, which would now be 39.6 percent. The carried interest holding period would be extended from three to five years, but the White House has called carried interest a loophole that should be eliminated altogether. Now, other administration proposals that didn't make the cut, getting rid of stepped-up basis, a minimum tax on corporate book income, and changes to IRS reporting rules. Now, House Democrats make up this money, though, through some new ideas of their own, like a three percentage point surtax on people making more than $5 million, raising the tax on tobacco and nicotine, and new rules for taxing cryptocurrencies. Now, still, the White House was supportive of the House plan, saying it meets the president's two core goals. It doesn't raise taxes on households making less than $400,000 a year, and it unwinds many of the Trump tax cuts from 2017, helping to fully offset the cost of that $3.5 trillion spending package. Next, I'm going to answer the questions you leave for me in the comments. Uh, so Lisa DeBoard asks, why are members of the Senate, uh, the senators exempt from taking the vaccine? So for whatever reason, with President Biden's vaccine mandate, he, out of the three branches, uh, he just has the executive branch having the vaccine mandate, but the uh, Congress, legislative, and the judicial branch do not fall into the vaccine mandate. Uh, there wasn't given any reason why, I'm not really sure. Uh, next question, uh, Jackie Schwid asks, what about unemployment? So it looks like the federal unemployment is done. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any more $300 per week boosts. No talk about it. No states coming forward saying that they're going to extend it. Uh, so it looks like unemployment federally is, is done at the moment. There's still state unemployment, of course, though. Uh, Peggy Lewis, is Joe Manchin taking Mitch McConnell's place? Uh, yeah, it seems like it, right? It seems that... Uh, what brings the people together is a good enemy. And it seems like with the Democrats, the enemy, uh, if, if it's not Mitch McConnell and the Republicans, they have to fight amongst themselves. And it looks like uh, Joe Manchin is that enemy that all the Democrats are kind of fighting behind. Now, there are Democrats who are silent, who probably agree with Joe Manchin, just not publicly saying so. But it looks like the sentiment is that, uh, yeah, Joe Manchin is kind of like the enemy of the Democrats at the moment. Uh, anyways, that is all the stimulus news I have for you today. To hopefully cheer you up a bit, here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, it's Bella's tip of the day. I want to tell you the one thing that you should do. Do the things that scare you the most because that after you do that, you become a better person. Bye. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love it when you watch these videos, like them, commenting, uh, keeps me going, gives me the fuel to want to give you all of these updates. Things are going to get crazy over the next couple of weeks now. Uh, in terms of family life, all is good. Uh, kids are, are great. Uh, wife is good. Everyone's all good here. I hope everything is good with you as well. If you want to check out any of my other videos, I have a couple of links up here for my other channel or down here for more stimulus updates, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe, thank you for watching.